Hello and welcome to our first lesson on Chapter 8, Lipids and Membranes. In this lesson we'll be looking at the general families or types of lipids and start to look a little bit at their structure. Remember from Chapter 2 that lipids are mostly hydrophobic, they're insoluble in water due to the hydrophobic effect, and we learned in Chapter 1 that they differ from amino acids and nucleotides in that they cannot form polymers. They have no defining functional groups, and we'll see more of why that's true in a little bit. Some, in fact most, are amphipathic, but not all. That is to say, they have both polar and nonpolar regions. What I have pictured on the slide here are some of my favorite lipids or fats. We'll find that lipids can function as a cellular barrier. We'll look at that in Chapter 8. And we'll also look in this chapter at how they control membrane fluidity. That cellular barrier also controls movement into and out of the cell, and we'll see how that works in Chapter 9. These barriers are also a place for proteins to dock and travel. We'll start to look at that in this chapter, but more particularly in Chapters 9 and 10. They can also serve as waterproofing agents, such as wax that might be found in plant leaves, but we won't be looking at that in any detail. Finally, they can serve as signaling agents, and we'll be looking at that in Chapter 10. So as you can see, lipids play a very important role in biological systems. Here are the general families or classes of lipids. Waxes on the far left, again we won't be looking at those in any detail. We have triacylglycerols and glycerophospholipids. They're both built on glycerol backbones. We have sphingolipids, similar in many respects to glycerophospholipids, but there's a different backbone. It's sphingosine, and we'll see how that looks a little bit later. Steroids, like cholesterol, are built from isoprene. And finally, we have icosanoids that are signaling molecules. We'll look at that in Chapter 10. Let's start with the simplest type of lipid, a fatty acid. They're long-chain carboxylic acids, so they have carboxylic acid groups at the end, that's the polar region, but these very long hydrocarbon chains that are mostly nonpolar or hydrophobic. Even number chains are the most common, and we'll see why when we get to Chapter 17. In this case, we're looking at palmitate on the left. It has 16 carbon atoms in its chain, and so we denote that as C with a subscript 16. Stearate on the right has 18 carbon atoms. In this case, for palmitate and stearate, you'll notice these are saturated fatty acids. That is, the tails are saturated with hydrogen atoms. They're all single bonds. They're no double bonds. This has to do with how they aggregate or pack together. And that saturation means that at room temperature, these tend to be solid like butter. We might also have an unsaturated fatty acid. That is, that hydrocarbon chain has one or more double bonds. We have pictured here on the left, oleate, which has one double bond, and linoleate on the right, which has two. In each case, you'll notice that that double, double bond has a cis configuration. That is, the hydrogen atoms are on the same side of that bond. In unsaturated chains, they pack together differently than saturated chains. They tend to be more loosely associated, and that makes them liquid at room temperature, like olive oil at the top here. Fatty acids, because they are so very hydrophobic, are not found in free form in an aqueous environment. They're usually bound to protein, and many times they're esterified to glycerol, as we'll see. Let's look for a moment at this, at the subject of saturated versus unsaturated. We have a cartoon diagram on the far left here of a glycerophospholipid. We'll be looking at the structure in more detail later. For now, let's look at those chains. We have a saturated chain in gray on the left, and you can see it's a very straight structure because they're all single bonds. We have an unsaturated chain on the right, which has one double bond, and because of that, there's a a kink that's introduced. This is what controls how they pack together. So on the top you can see saturated fatty acids, they closely pack together, they're very ordered and a very rigid structure, and this is what makes them solid at room temperature, like butter. On the other hand, if they're unsaturated, they can't pack together quite as well. They tend to be more disordered, and these are fluid at room temperature, like oils. 
and sometimes we'll see in lipid bilayers there are ordered microdomains and these are referred to as lipid rafts but we'll see more of that a little bit later Next we have triacylglycerols or triglycerides. They're built on a glycerol backbone and we have glycerol at the top here, three carbon compound, three hydroxyl groups and each of those hydroxyl groups may be esterified to a fatty acid chain and that's pictured at the bottom here. So the glycerol backbone is in black and our three fatty acid chains are in green and you'll notice there's an ester link here to that glycerol backbone. Keep in mind these three fatty acid chains may be all different in terms of the length of the carbon chain and the degree of saturation and that provides a lot of variety in terms of structure and function. Triglycerides don't form bilayers. It has to do with the geometry of their structure which we'll look at a little bit later. So they're not a part of biological membrane. Their role generally is to be stored as an energy source. They aggregate into globules and that's illustrated in this electron micrograph of hepatocytes. You can see those flat fat globules are the the white portions here. Now this is not a healthy liver but it's a very good picture of what these fat globules look like. We tend to store our fat long term as these triglycerides. That's how it's stored in our adipocytes. And we'll look at more at the metabolism of that in chapter 17. In our next lesson we want to look at stru the structures of the various phospholipids. We want to see how they're similar and what ways they differ. And we'll look at the general structure of sterols.